In this week's episode, we take on our most challenging but beautiful route with two vehicles that's both more than 20 years old. Can we make it through the Laguna route? Very good morning. And um, today we are saying goodbye to Uyuni and embarking on the next leg of our wonderful adventure through Bolivia. And to start off on a good note, we are visiting a cemetery and going to sleep at a cemetery. But, it but it's is also a museum. It's also a museum, huh? Oh, does it count as a museum? Yes. Yeah. It's a museum. Okay, yeah, I'm not so sure of that, but let's say it counts as a museum. If you sleep over, does it count for two? <laughs> two. A long visit to a museum. Yes. Uh, but it's a train cemetery, <laughs> not, a, not a normal cemetery. Yeah, we've heard there's a lot of trash here. Oh, I'm here. Nearly, there's the, same, there's the train cemetery. Um, and we are doing a convoy, so we are meeting up with um, some new overlanding friends, the Combi Chronicles, and they should be here uh, um, later this afternoon. Um, we are prepped, stocked, water fuel, yes. a sleepover next to their trains, and meeting up with friends, and tomorrow we are heading off to see all the Laguna routes. Yeah. And heading towards Chile, it is going to be a great, great adventure. Yes. That night we camped next to the old rusted trains and got to know Lee Willow and the cats much better. And we had a chat about our route. On the outskirts of Uyuni, at the rendezvous point waiting for our partners in crime, Lee and Willow of the Combi Chronicles. Just filled up with the last fuel to top up because we have 400 kilometers of very little fuel stations available. Are you ready for the next adventure, honey? I think so. Depends. <laughs> you don't look that confident. No, probably. So we have a four days of slow driving through fantastic landscapes in front of us. Here they come. And oh yes, you can hear that Subaru engine. The Subaru engine in the VW in, in the VW Combi, you, you can uh, hear them from afar. Don't like they your really face. Yes, yeah. they don't like you today. Yeah. So they didn't allow you to fill no, up no, your... No, they did. Oh, okay. We just came here first thing in case there was a problem. Yeah, we had time yeah, to fix yeah, it. Yeah, and then yeah. we went on a coffee mission, which failed. Oh, no. Good. You'll have to drink instant like me. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck a tea. Oh, yes, yes. Okay, okay cool. Um, so we want to fill up or refill in San Cristobal. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. That will be our yeah. stop in between. Yeah. And I'm Unless we see something interesting. Yeah. yeah. We're happy to stop. And then I'm, I'm, I'm nearly out of data. So, you No, let's go. Let's give her one of the walkie talkies. Walkie talkies. Yeah. 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 Well, I am signed in because I asked this morning if I can do my yeah, Duolingo. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, but we might not be close enough. I don't know. Oh, is it? If we drive together, we probably are. Yeah. But like, obviously, if you go off somewhere. Yeah, yeah but uh, if I'm behind, I'm going to stay about a kilometer behind you in the dust. Yeah, the dust. Yeah. Otherwise, our car is going to. Oh, the same it. for us. Yeah, so yeah, we're yeah. yeah. Cool. Okay, so choose the channel. Five. Five, okay. Press the button to Yes. Okay. I can hear you. Cool. Oh, wrong button. Yeah. I can hear you. Okay. <laughs> Remember to release when you talk. No, I mustn't yeah. release. I was pushing. Talk, release. Yes. Yeah. Okay, okay cool. Yeah. And if we get separate or whatever, we, we, see we meet at number two something. Number two. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 We left Uyuni driving west on a relatively good tow road that turned into gravel off about 75 kilometers. Keeping our eyes peeled for Uyuni and other wild and we spotted some very quickly. After another fuel stop to top up our tanks, we turned south onto the Laguna route, a very corrugated and rocky route through the most amazing landscapes. 
as we say in Africa, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. And that's why we decided to convoy this route. This is something we rarely do, as we like the freedom of doing our own thing. But this was a different challenge, and everybody's advice was to convoy due to the remote area and the lack of infrastructure and fuel stops. The landscape was extremely dry and dusty. Occasionally, we crossed some small streams with green vegetation along the banks, but that was a very rare sight. The signs of civilization quickly disappeared, and we only saw one group of buildings on the first day's driving. The people still used traditional farming methods here, adobe building methods and no signs of electricity or plumbing. We quickly fell in love with the landscapes. We quickly fell in love with the landscapes and luckily our first planned stop was not far on the route. We were very conservative with the distances on this route and we wanted to spend as much time as possible camping and less time driving, as the driving here is very challenging. Our first stop was Bosque de Pedras, or the Rock Forest. We have heard that the wind can be extreme on this route and the rock formations would allow us some protection if we wanted to make a fire and chat to Lou and Willow some more. So we spent our first night next to the fire, trading stories and talking about our plans for the next few days. It's quite risky picking people to convoy with and we were grateful that we clicked so well with Willow and Lee and that this was a good partnership along this challenging route. Very good morning uh, from one of our best, coldest wild camps so far in South America. But we did have a lovely evening last night next to the fire, listening to fire songs. And I need to show you my second attempt at making brilliant biltong, my carnival's dream. After oversalting slightly the first batch, I've tamed, I've um, done of quite a bit less salt this time and gone thicker pieces and we are on the high altar plow now so the air is still very very dry um, unfortunately every time we drive now I'll have to pack it away and hang it up again but we're not driving more than three four hours a day so um, it's been hanging since yesterday around three o'clock so it'll be nearly one day when I um, it'll be about 18 hours when I um, pack it away this morning and this afternoon I'll hang it up again and hopefully in a day or two I'll be able to eat delicious biltong. We are crossing the border to Chile and you are not supposed to take fresh meat through. And they do tend to take stuff that they like to eat so I'll have to hide and smuggle my biltong through the border between Bolivia and Chile because it's not fresh. It should not qualify as being having to be confiscated. But I can't wait, maybe one or two days more, and we can eat Carnival's Dream. This was a great place to wake up in and to spend the morning, as we quickly learned that the wind is a lot less in the mornings. Therefore, we spent a lot of time outside in the mornings and only started driving later in the day when the wind started picking up again. This was a rhythm we would maintain all along this route. We are off on our second day of traveling the Laguna route. Karin's dodging very high um, centers because the roads are quite washed out. And the uh, Comic Chronicles are leading today. Yeah. Yesterday they were eating dust, so um, today it's our turn. Yeah. We're going to keep it to about three hours driving because um, we've heard it's a lot of washboard and there's quite a lot to see. We're going to see how many lagunas? I think two or three. Uh, but yeah, I'm only going to uh, try and do 60 kilometers. Yeah. Not going to try and overexert after 60 it's, it's a good place to travel, yeah, and I mean, yeah, 
and there's a lot to see. Uh, we love to walk camp of last night. Eh? Okay, Laguna Negro, Negra, llamas grazing in the far distance. Yeah, not full capacity, um, but still a beautiful walk. Unfortunately, not wheelchair friendly. Just give you a 180. You guys look so professional doing that. <laughs> like a wild oiled machine. Cool and late. What's wrong? Cool and late. Oh. Engine just suddenly went. Oh no! I'll be alright. Um, Got to stop it as soon as possible. Oh. Okay. And they fixed the car, and now we're gonna drive off because we've used a lot of their water. And we're gonna see the little town of Villa Mar if we can find antifreeze because they've drained the antifreeze and um, some water. Successful in getting antifreeze, but we could buy some water and beers in Villa Mar. So we headed off to find our first wild camp just outside of town. This would be the last town that we would see on this 400 kilometer road. We found a great place next to a river with a beautiful view, but again, the afternoon was very windy. Good morning. On day two of our Laguna route drive, and we woke up. Brilliant wild camp surrounded by llamas, ducks and all other birds um, and it's time to check our suspension and our wheel nuts because we're going to hit a lot of corrugation. It, we're going to be shake, rattle and roll all day. But again, beautiful landscapes all around. Evenings are again very windy, so we didn't spend much time outside, not like last the previous night. But the mornings are quiet and peaceful. Super tough. It's rocky, it's sandy, and sometimes it's smooth. Um, and they have to carry all their shit with them on the bicycle. So, yeah, kudos to them. They call them the hearts because they've got hearts on the back of their bicycle panel. We haven't actually met, but we see them all the time. We've been seeing them since um, just before the Peru uh, Bolivia border. We saw quite a few carcasses of vehicles left behind. This was a stark reminder of the dangers of taking on this challenging route. We've arrived at Laguna Ca 
Kapina, Kapina. Quite a bit of mining activity happening here. What it looks like. Unfortunately, people leaving their toilet paper again when they pee. Which Bloody keeps woman. pissing all of us off. Who says it's a woman? At this lake, there was a lot of lithium mining in progress. Lithium is a big source of income for Bolivia, but it's very challenging to extract it in this stark environment. The multicolored mountains and landscapes took our breath away as we approach Laguna, Colorado, one of the highlights on this route. This area gets very little rainfall, and in some places there are no plant life, just rocks as far as you can see. At the end of day two, we caught sight of Laguna, Colorado in the distance. But that's a story for another time, so please remember to like, subscribe and hit that bell icon so you won't miss out on future adventures. Thank you for our Patreons for making these videos possible.